Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. It's Eric here. And it's my maiden program. Let me show my face so I can address you. Today's a maiden program of African Art Talks with Eric. And as you can see, I've come fully prepared in my dashiki. Now I'll wait for a few people to join us, but I'm so excited about this program because this program will talk about all things African art. And for your information, I've got a very good friend of mine who'll be joining me to talk about African art, his art, and African art in general. So as soon as you join me, do well to share this video. Let it reach far and wide to allow us to tell our story. I'm just going to hold in a few minutes you can bear with me whilst I share this video to my network. Good thing is, there's a telephone line that I will be showing. If you can make a note of this telephone number, it would be 0044-7732-465-239. So at some point within the program, I'll allow you to text in your message, answer, uh, ask all the questions that you'd like to ask, and also call in if you want, so that you can actually join in the conversation. It's all about African art. Great. So I'm just going to watch. Thank you. Thank you for joining me this afternoon. Let me share it to all my platforms as well so that others can join in this very post. I hope you've all had a very fantastic afternoon. I hope you've, you've, you've had um, a brilliant day. It's still Saturday. And we're going to actually take it easy, talking about our own artwork, our own creativity. And then you can also comment in this show to make sure that you ask Patrick all the right questions. Uh, he needs to actually answer all of us, everything that, you know, we want to ask him, every question that we want to ask him, definitely keep asking him. Uh, right, so there we go. Bear with me just one more time, just one more share, and then we'll be joining Patrick very soon. Great. So that's one comment that just came through. Marie says, good evening. Good evening, Patrick, Eric and Patrick for telling. Good job, Eric and Patrick, for telling your authentic African story through art. Great. Keep the comments coming in and we'll keep this show started very, very shortly. What you can do is just invite all your friends, share the video and invite all your friends to come and join in because this message has to go far and wide. Fantastic, so how are you doing? How are you doing? If you've got any questions for Patrick, as I said, call the number on the screen. It will be 0044 7732 
I'm in my and this afternoon, as you can tell. We're going to talk about Africa, African art, promote ourselves. That is what this show is all about. This show is to talk about our story, our own story. This show is to promote our artists amongst us. This show is to educate us. This show is to talk about our creativity. Now, in time past, we've not told our story and our story has been told by someone else. We want to be able to tell our story ourselves. We want to be able to actually share our joys, our tears, our, our fashion, our strength, our wealth, how we do things, even to the point of politics, how the dynamics of our politics work. We want to communicate it. We want to be able to use art to solve socioeconomic issues. And we want to do it the African way. So that is why I'm inviting all of you to join in and share the video so that this will reach far and wide. Today, I have got a gentleman called Patrick. He'll be joining me quite shortly. He's joining me from Ghana. He's joining me from Ghana. So he'll join me shortly and we will carry on with this conversation. But in the meantime, if you've got any questions that you'd like to text in, I've got my phone ready waiting for you to actually type in any questions that you've got to ask Patrick and he will answer you. So as I said, yes, this show is about African art and our paintings are extremely diverse as Africans. Now we paint from the spiritual point of view. Africans actually put their whole spirit, soul and body into their paintings when we are telling our story. It's not just commercial. We go beyond just the commercial aspect. And what we do is we put our spirit, soul and body into our creativity. That is why when you look at our artworks, it actually touches you emotionally. Because we don't just paint something just to sell. We tell our story and we like to encourage almost everyone who is an artist or creative to express themselves through their works. Thing is, if we don't, who will? If we don't tell our story our way, who else? And that is why for every Saturday from now on, I'll be inviting a creative genius from the African continent to come here and share their story. I'd like to read you a quotation by a very good artist in the United States who says, his name is Yen Sing, Yen Sing Bay. Most of you will know him as most deaf. And he says, African art is functional. African art serves a purpose. It's not just a dormant thing, but it's, it's not a means to collect the largest selling, uh, cheering section, but it should be healing and a source of joy, spreading positive vibrations. So this is what I was saying earlier on, that our works should actually have meaning and touch souls. It should actually make sense to the wonders observing the African art. It should actually touch the person's soul from our history, telling our history. I can't remember when I was little and I went to the marketplace. I observed how people sold their stuff. The market women sold it. The joy with which they would take, let's say, um, an orange, wipe it all up, clean it, and preserve it to the customer. That act was well, them putting themselves into what they were selling. When you go to, let's say, children playing ampe, for instance, back in those days, you have everyone engrossed in that activity. It's not like these days where you pick up just your PlayStation and play it. But you have people so much engrossed in what they were doing. This is what we as artists translate onto, let's say, a canvas as a form of painting or a sculpture or something that can actually capture that moment in our history. But we've most often let it go. We've not really paid attention to what we've got and we've been pursuing what others do. So it has actually uh, let others tell our story for us and they are not able to translate what we do properly. That is why I'm championing this cause, championing this cause that we should rise and tell our stories ourselves. So I'm going to call Patrick on here to actually join us to have this conversation. I think he was having a few technical issues earlier on, but I'm just going to make sure that he's okay to join us live right now.
Hello, how are you doing? Right, okay. Do you want us to do it as a, um, an audio show? Oh, can you join? Okay, I'm ready for you now. Great. Okay. Okay. So Patrick said that he's jo just going to join us in a few minutes' time. But what I'm going to do is talk about my art. Yes. Until Patrick joins us. So I've been involved in telling our African story these days. And all my artworks are to just tell our story, whether it's solving socioeconomic issues, whether it's addressing an issue which is currently going on. And if you look behind me, you will see. Uh, George Floyd's painting, which I've entitled, I Can't Breathe. I Can't Breathe. This painting is addressing all the social in injustices that have been going on in this world against Black people. So I captured this painting, and as you can see, it's got George in the middle, it's got uh, Trayvon, and all the others who have been killed illegally. Their blood is actually dripping down, and that's the strips in the American flag. You've got the stars which are distorted because there's chaos in America. And then if I go further down, you can actually see the actual act of the man. And I've called it, I can't breathe. I've called it, I can't breathe. This is how art can actually come in to solve issues. George Floyd was murdered very badly, illegally. Gandalf, his, you can see this, uh, the, the policeman's knee on his neck, which I do not condone. So as a form of expression against that act, I painted this and it's been sold already. So as artists and as creative, we should ensure that we communicate our displeasure through our works. And this is why I'm trying to bring all Africans on board to say that your work is valued, your work is cherished, but you should tell your story. Don't allow anyone else to come in to tell that story of yours. There's another painting series that I'm doing, and I'm going to show uh, the, the screen. The first one is about African Akan trumpet blowers. Now, when you go to the Akan in the Ashanti Kingdom, Akans in the Ashanti Kingdom, they have ceremonies. So during, let's say, Akwesi Day, for instance, you see them all gathered in the Ashanti Kingdom Palace. You find them blowing these horns, and these horns communicate to us. So I, I sort of captured this to show that, yes, we've got a rich history. And if you look in the background, you see the Adinkra symbols, which we use to communicate as Akans. This is a very rich culture that should be preserved, that should be kept. You know, the wise normally write their history in books. We can write them in books as well as in them. They have got, if you go to the National Gallery in the UK, for instance, they've got paintings of they are great historians, great men that lived in those eras. Let's say the 16th century. Let's say the 17th century. Even before then, they drew them and captured that history. Why can't we as Africans also do the same and capture our Shaka Zulus, our Yas and Boers? Let's record that history properly and most importantly, preserve them. So the artwork in the middle I talked to you about. And then they third one is what I did during the quarantine in London. It's being eased off, and from Monday, I think it will be eased off um, almost totally. But it's about love over fear. Love conquering all. So you can see African people in their masks with the sign of love between the man and the woman. Now, this is also a message that I communicated to the rest of the world that, yes, the news is showing all these bad news. The news is actually talking about death all over the place. The news is scary, but with love, with safety, you can actually conquer. With faith, you can overcome the fear. This is how artists do communicate. Great. So I'm going to bring Patrick on right now and we'll carry on with the conversation. There will be other times where Artist friends who are watching me, I'll be inviting you on board as well to talk about what you do, why you do what you do from an African perspective. And also to encourage us, you know, not everyone has been bold enough to put their work out there, but I know there's that element of creativity in you, in every one of us. 
So as we share our story, as we share our processes, as we talk about how we do things, you never know, someone will be encouraged to pick up that pen again, to pick up that brush again and do what he does best, to communicate. Patrick, I said, he's joining us right now. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. That's what I've told him. Because this guy is so committed. This guy is really, really serious about his, his work. And I'm just going to show you a video of him at work right now. be able to also i mean um let clients understand that it's not just about we getting to have the love to produce the works but something yeah. way much beyond the love because we share each i mean i tell people that each and every painting i do is a portion of me so each and every time you look at my painting just remember i'm just close to you that's right that's right that's it exactly definitely <laughs> Right, so let, let, let's start from here. Who is who is Patrick William Dodo? All right, so Patrick William Dodo is a gentleman from a town called Sekendi in Western Region okay. in Ghana. Um, well, let me say the 33rd child of my father, and mm -hmm. actually was a chief, so, but then it has a whole lot of things to do about my arts work. All right. Um, I have actually... Yes, I have actually um, 36 siblings. And so I happen to be Sorry, one of the fortunate ones. Yes, 36 siblings. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Wow. That's amazing. I know. That's amazing. <laughs> 
So, Baba, um, it's been like that for a while now, I would say for now, that it's it's a blessing um, just being among all these uh, wonderful siblings of mine, and I've learned a lot from them, the same thing for my other quite a number of people around too. But then this who Patrick is, that is the side of the family. So Patrick happens to also be a corporate artist. That is what he's known for in Ghana. So he's a okay. corporate artist who um, happens to seek so much power to put arts on the top form in most of our high institutions, from the parliament yeah. to other banking institutions to each and every other thing. I mean, think about it. Any high institutions just have to have a lot of talk and other things about it. But then that's what I think I'm really known up for. Sure. Oh, okay. Okay. So by <laughs> corporate art artists, you mean you serve the corporate well in Ghana, basically? Exactly. Okay. Okay. And w what made you go yeah. into that area? That's the main thing. So for um, a while now, I've been thinking, I mean, not just for a while now, but I have been thinking for um, for quite some time, years ago, that it was two things. You know, I'm known as the first, fastest Ghanaian live artist. First, right. fastest Ghanaian live artist. I actually placed um, paintings and other things to stage and then actually okay. worked it out to it certain extent where presidents now really loved it. You know, there are times where Ghana, whenever they get to have some of this, their experts and other things come in, they yeah. end up giving them always um, can take cloth or maybe a carved stool. I remember and that, it has, yes. been that <laughs> it has been in that, I mean, routine for a very long time. So my question is, and, and then even when it comes to the side of entertainment, it's either poetry or maybe dance, and then music. Yeah. The question is that, where is the fine arts? Where does mm. it play? Oh. Mm. And so I thought about it and I realized, okay, coming in with a live painting, just as other people are doing out there in US and other few places, um, it can equally also play a role over here. I started, it wasn't so much easy because I remember, I mean, there's a lot of story to that, but then just okay. to cut things short and then also making things right on point, I would just say that I remember when there were times where I used to beg um, MCs and um, event organizers just to put me on a bill wow. or put me on the stage. Months down the line, it's all changed. Seriously, okay. it all changed. And then all of a sudden, it was as, hello, Patrick, we need your service. Hello, Patrick, is <laughs> that. Hello, Patrick, is that. But then to the point where people really get to understand the nature of corporate artists is when mm. I actually thought that, okay, sometimes our appearance also counts. Well, we always see artists paint all over this and that. I don't discriminate that. But I no. realized that just as they, it, it said that when you go to Rome, I mean, the Roman, you do what Romans do. Romans do. I mean, when you go to Rome, exactly. When you go to Rome, you do what Romans do. So um, what will let the people embrace you? Okay. Go into the banking in, uh, institution. I know it's hardly for you to really um, find paintings hung all over, but then yeah. it's not highly um, a mistake for them to equally give a painting as maybe a high price value thing to maybe a high client just appreciating them or probably just getting to say that, um, well, um, they could maybe just give it out to their own. Um, I mean, Fine. one of the top clients yeah. or maybe any of their visiting. Um, MDs or someone from other few places. So these things have been on for a while and then probably other institutions also picked it up. I mean, insurance institutions also picked it up. Then it went to the churches and then also okay. took it up from that institution too. Yeah. And that's what I've been wow. known for corporate artists for this while, sure. <laughs> so you've been doing some really good job amongst, amongst your colleagues as well. And I can, I can tell I'm part of, part of your groups as well which is a uh, Peter, but we will Thank get there you. at some point. At the moment, oh, how, yeah. have you, how have you actually um, done this? Because I know when I was growing up, art wasn't so popular in Ghana or Africa per se. When you were going to study art or when mm -hmm. I wanted to study art in those days, I remember my parents saying, oh, go and do the core subjects first. Core subjects being math, uh, English, the science subjects, you know, biology, chemistry, physics, and all that. So these were... Mm -hmm. the directions in where in which we were pushed when we were little 
I'm not sure whether you face the same yeah. challenge as well. Brother, I really faced it. In fact, it's something, I mean, I believe that it's probably, let me say, the 30% of each and every artist's um, struggle coming mm. up. Well, I happen to be, as I said already, being in the family, siblings alone, we are over 30. We don't need um, congregation for our service. We don't need, we don't need a whole <laughs> crowd for, we, we are our own party. You know, alone. You, you, just with mom and dad. I, I should say. We, we, that's it. A whole football team. <laughs> and so, um, one of the things I learned from was, I mean, from all these things were then, father expects a lot from all of you. Mm. But being in a whole, let me put it in the form as crowd, being in a whole wow. crowded house like this, how do you stand out? Now, okay. from a family where your father was an artist and an engineer, but then he majored more into engineering because he was um, the chief maintenance engineer for Christian Gold Force then, and then also right. had a lot of other businesses, very wonderful entrepreneur. But yeah. then to get to understand more of these things, I believe for a fact that um, being relevant was really needed in the house. How do you stand out for everyone to still support you? Well, family where... Doing art alone, even going to school, St. John's, they will tell you that, you know what, all right, Patrick, you are doing art, but as soon as you get to the university, you are branching from art because I was good in math and would actually join maybe um, national, um, I mean, national math and science quiz and all that. So the question all is right. the visual to join these things for, I mean, that thing, the meaning that you can actually do better. But then I felt, yeah. it, I felt it was quite insulting when you say, I can do better. Are you trying to say that the art that I'm doing is less important? If you understand what I mean. Yes. Yes, So I needed to also now make it a point to now prove to them that, um, you know, this is what you've given me. I need to give you a reason Mm -hmm. to improve me. One of the things I remember um, doing one of the times is my father had these friends from Scotland. Whenever they come, they go to Bristol together, maybe buy gold and other things. And so they came home one time. I was in school. I was not even in the house. I was only told this issue. I mean, this um, wonderful story. And then the man said that, hey, Sammy, you are very rich. You were like, okay, why? Why are you saying I'm rich? What did you see that's making you say, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, you're very rich. He said, but you have all these paintings. Do you know how much these paintings cost in Scotland? Mm. And, well, he said, well, these paintings is my son, one of my sons who did come in meeting. First time okay. that I ever had, let me say, a wonderful trade ever. They picked three paintings for a car. On the spot? Because they were returning back. They mostly come, they will probably just rent a car and others. But in this one, they came and they felt they needed to do some few rounds and they just bought it outright. But then they traded three paintings wow. for the car. They left the wow. car for, for us. Apparently, around okay. that time, I wasn't even really driving, but then, yes, still. You see, so, so, so this, is, this is where your, your, your dad would say, oh, that's my son, you know? That's it, you know. Then they, they try and then prove all points. Yeah, that, that's, that's him. That's him. <laughs> that's my son. That kind of thing. Right. Well, right. but then these are the same things. When I grew up to a certain point where my father was no more, and other few people that were so much supportive were not there, I realized that it's the same thing in relation that I need to actually come out with and then let people understand that before. I mean, let artists understand that if we want to be accepted, yeah. we need to give people the reason. That's right. Now, there's no father who would continue to pay the school fees of a son who keeps drawing a football like a stone. Yes, yes. That's a good point. So, exactly. That father will continue to push you and push you only when you give the reason that, oh, okay, I can drive well. Then you are qualified to have a car. Oh, I can actually maybe run well. Then it gives you a point that you have a qualification for you to have spikes for your yes. boots, you yes. know? Stay so the whole ball. thing is just like someone would say, exactly, if you want to travel, get a passport. That's it. You know, it. if you really want to run, just start walking. It, it needs to start somewhere. Exactly. So it, it's the point where most of, of of we, the artists, will need to start giving people or collectors, galleries, and other people, other institutions out there that indeed we are 
capable of what we are being seen to be. That's right. And you know, right. art is one of the things that we need to really understand that it's uh, it's visual. It is. It's visual. It's just one of these days that I'm not. Yes, it was just last week I was um, talking to some few students from Legon and educating them on what we call element of design. And one yes. of the things we kept talking about element of design, we always took like two things out that were so significant and that sign the significant um, things are now playing a role. Mm -hmm. First of it all, it's even not recorded that element of design, we have time as True. part of it. Time is part of it. Time is part of and it. And then the major... Exactly. And the major of it all is space. And that is what is playing. Time and space. These and space. two things is actually playing this role only in our com um, contemporary arts, yeah. installations, and, and all that. So these are the things happening right now. And then and the then times you, will let us understand with your, more. You'll be ending up with your form, isn't it? Sure. Your time, space, and then you get your sure. form. And this is what we tangibly see in front That's of us. It. That's right. Hey, so, traffic, exactly. yeah, very exactly. good upbringing. But, you know, did, did you face any challenges in your childhood when you were trying to, did you get that opposition? Because this is something that I'd like us to talk about. There are a lot of young guys coming after us who would like to go into the art world. But what would you want to tell them? You know, did, should they find mentors at this day? Did you have anyone that you looked up to? How do they handle the challenge? of opposition, even at that very young age. All right, brother. You see, um, this is where I was actually deprived from even getting art materials. Now, one of the things I have, which at the moment I don't have them here, but it's, uh, it's just in one of the things I've actually kept down for a greater point of maybe a TEDx, whatever. Oh, yes. But I started painting with sugar cane. I okay. started painting as, as, as brush. my brush, painting brush. Wow. Yes. So when we chew sugar cane, I collect the fine ones, or sometimes yes. I just collect the peels, and then mm -hmm. I put stones on it, dry them okay. before I can use that. Apparently, my, one of my sisters did art in the school, but then as when she finished, she went to the, um, this A-levels and other things and then did something very different. But right. then she had a poster color. And so with that alone really helped me to do some certain things. But then you see, just as the question goes, did I actually face issues? Yes, I did. Mm -hmm. And the best means for me to actually come out was in this form. Well, this is the father who was an artist, but then actually didn't want me to become an artist. Yes. Wanted me to do something business, um, something accounting, like, auditing, yeah. something of that sort. Yes. Exactly. And then you are still good in art. Now, mm -hmm. I needed to stand the ground at a point that I was seen like disrespectful in the house. Right. This I can't hide, but then character mm -hmm. traits, attitude, yeah. these things yeah. really happen. Sometimes you just need to stand firm and then show that this is what you have. Yeah. But then yeah. at the point where I was proving all stubborn, and, yeah, I was trying to prove all stubborn that, yeah, I want to do art, I want to do this. It's not like I even knew the future, what I really wanted to do. Mm hmm Okay. But then the only thing was that I felt like, okay, this is what I so want to do. I even didn't know we have sculpture, we have um, we have painting for this extent, this, that. Yeah. But then one of the things I started working on, so my mother actually sat me down. My mother actually okay. sat me down to say that, Nana, you, you need to respect daddy's instructions. He doesn't That's want fine. you to go and do art in this form, in that form. But you okay. see, miraculously, even getting to be in Takradi Polytechnic then, the forms that I filled, I mm -hmm. don't know how it came. My name came and, I mean, we submitted everything to um, purchasing and supply course. Okay. That's what I sent as what my father wanted me to do. But then guess what? They brought the whole thing and my name was found at the Department of Arts. Oh, you see, he thought that what I'm, will be, exactly. what will be, will be. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yes. Exactly. And so people were finding it so easy to go and change. And my father came helping out my brothers with connections, everything that, you know what, we want him to do purchasing and supply management. Okay. Unfortunately, I was finding it so hard to change. To and change, so they yes. said, okay, fine. This is just for diploma. 
<laughs> I couldn't change it. Mm. I mean, no one with all the um, resources, with all the help, whatever, they couldn't change it. Couldn't change it. They couldn't. And, I'm and telling I you, will, my brother. I will so see it from that. It. Yeah, I'll see it from a spiritual standpoint. Where I see it as everybody well, has been given a mandate when they are coming on this earth. And ultimately, you will end exactly. up doing what God has set you up to do. You can, you exactly. can, some people do travel and do other things. Let's say at their 45th mm -hmm. birthday or when they are 50 years, that is when they discover their mm. purpose. Now, mm -hmm. you'll be very sure. lucky if you actually enter into that as early as you did and you've stuck to it till now. So, I guess will say that. Saying, guess yeah. what about it? Yeah? I mean, guess what about uh, KFC? The brand KFC? That's, that's the story that I was going All to right? say, yes. The man, the man himself actually got to discover everything come to being after the age of 60. After 60? After 60? After 60. All yes. the struggles, everything, and then no more, but then the legacy is still on. Uh, it's still living so on. So at some time, I mean, at a point, that's it. At a point in my life, getting to be through these struggles, the struggles are in different forms. I, I sweat a lot. Yeah. Even that alone actually gave me a whole lot of issues in the university where I needed to uh, miss two examinations because they felt like I just rushed in. Look at that. I sweat a lot at a point. My sweat alone, um, I mean, damaged some few watercolors of when, mine. And then yeah. I felt so down. But when I submitted it, it was a huge blow to my lecturer that, oh, I love this side of it. Wow. But then who are you to go and say, oh, it was a drop. It was of, a sweat. Uh, a sweat. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so the struggles will come. Mm -hmm. But I keep telling people that it's not about, I mean, the choices we've made. Are so let's wait for Patrick to reconnect. Yes. I think he's having a few issues. But he'll be the choices. Sure. Patrick, can so you hear me? The choices. I can hear you, brother. So I'm saying that the choices are not wrong, but approach to the choices is Great. the issue so we can all have everything go on and everything but that i mean as to um, all struggles but it all depends on how we handle them some Definitely. of us we've come through a long way yes. but then it's good it's actually strengthened as we know what we are doing now so the message i'm hearing now and that's something i've always stood for and have thought in my in my videos is that how you present yourself matters in life life will present you with what lemonades uh, lemons Hello. Turn them into lemonade. Sure. Even your sure. sweat that you thought was mm. going to go against you mm -hmm. went in your favor. So mm -hmm. my message to everyone that's mm -hmm. watching us is that how you present your life, uh, your 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 life, yes, in life matters. Now you might have some disabilities. Sure. You might have things that are going against you, but use them to your advantage. Many of you can think. Many of you can do marvelous, creative things. Embrace it. Embrace who God has created you to mm. be. And try and do that from an early age, if you can, so that you don't go in circles to your the latter part of your life before you actually do it. Embrace who you are. Not everybody has been created to be a medical doctor. Not everybody has been created to be an engineer. Not everybody has been created to be what a lawyer. So discover sure. what your purpose is from an early age. Mm. I discovered a quotation mm. from your Facebook page, and I'm going to read every single bit of it. And I'll let you explain it <laughs> because I love right. it so much. As I said, I've been Thank playing you. Patrick for a while and I love his consistency and determination in life. So Patrick says, I look on the 4th of June is when you posted this. You said, I look to the brighter <laughs> side of life, even where the light, there is no light. A lot of us always wait for a light to be made like a path before we climb such voyage, but we never want to be the light ourselves. I stood for art the very first day or the very day in my life where I had to choose between art and school, art and business, art as a way of life. I never understood the merits and the demerits to its effect, but I stand a great means of growth to my current state as an artist. I love what I have become, but not as much than the father I am to my two beautiful children. Now, proud father and an artist with a difference. The mm. best is the respect I can build to my loving family. Remember, your choices are not wrong, but the approaches to them makes that difference. Patrick sure. William W. 
Now, I see this as a very solemn submission to the world. Mm. For everyone that has been torn in, in, in choices, that yes. is at the crossroads of making a decision to pursue art. This sure. message, can you add more to it? Why did you write this? Well, the whole thing was just about um, two friends that had actually come to me and were talking about their difficulties and everything in arts. Uh, I mean, they are very good. These guys, I see them each and every time. They are doing an exhibition here and there. Surprisingly, I've done only one exhibition. I mean, okay. pro, as a pro, as a professional. Only yeah. one exhibition. That was when I was opening my gallery. I mean, our first time meeting too was through my gallery at American yeah. Embassy here at the um, continent. Okay. And uh, after they shared everything, thinking about it, I realized that, hmm, it's, it's the same art they are doing, mm -hmm. the same painting they are doing, not yeah. as the same styles, but then painting, yes, I'm also painting. They That's are right. doing more exhibitions. I'm not doing more exhibitions. They okay. are going for a lot of workshops. I'm not going for a lot of workshops. But then they are always participating as a participant, being at the point to listen and not being to, I mean, being at the point to be heard. Oh. So I felt like, okay, we all have the choices. It's either you choose to sit in a congregation or you choose to sit on the altar and then That's actually it. declare what you have inside you. But then yes. it's about the approach. How are you going to make it like a jigsaw fits within? That's Just right. as it is in this form, in that same form, it can be like this, but can be a different style and a new one to be actually what? Embraced. Embraced. And so I spoke through, I mean, spoke through with this and I thought about my family in addition to no matter how it is, the best of any other thing that someone would like to use mm -hmm. to empower another person is just being, I mean, the means of making reference. Okay. okay. So there's this guy called Patrick. He's an artist. He did so well. And so one day I want that, I want my son or my daughter to be exactly like him. Yeah, that's good. I have a friend, he's called Eric. He does this, he does that. Okay, That's and right. one day I would like to be like him. him now, yeah. these are the things that would aid, change a perspective that has been in Ghana and some African countries. And let me say the whole wide world about the mentality about art, mm. where a child shows interest to work and probably they just try as much as possible, empower the person just for a while. And then when it comes to the point of being professional, they set you back and they tell said, you, you yeah, know what, it's not going to pay. That's right. It's not going to pay. So as a father, I know for a fact that my kids might be artists. Yes. I can't force them. You can't force but then them, no. the values, that, exactly. But then the values and the point for me to have a lay a very good um, fundamentals and Foundation. basics for them to have good creative mind at least that's right also valid so much i believe for a father that in some few years they might grow and then see the same code just as you've seen it over there and i believe yeah. other people who are also listening to are going to pick this thing up and i'm going to work with it but then the main yeah. thing is that no matter the choice i chose to do art other people yeah. have also chosen to do art but we are not that's on right. the same level only because we've chosen the thing but then we are not ready to just be the limelight out there Yes. It's just like other people saying that, all right, sure. So um, God says, I will prepare a table before my enemies. Now, yeah. whenever the table is being prepared, it's either you join someone's table to also take the grace, or That's you right. would prepare, your, you will set up your table. And then that one will call you work. And I learned this thing from um, Tara Perry, um, yeah. saying that, I mean, saying that same contest and then explaining that, okay, several times they needed to go and rent places. But mm -hmm. now he took time placing every investment, bit of everything he was able to raise from Madia. And then now yeah. this is where he is. He owns yes. a whole uh -huh. large of thing. And then he's not just as an actor. He's a producer. He owns, I mean, all these things. So the whole thing is that it's either you create the table or you create that light or you stand behind to use the people's light that has been already, already been created. Already created so yeah. it is the approach. So the main quote about this whole thing that I wanted to explain through was that your choice is not wrong. True. But the True. approach to the choice.
is right. what matters. Exactly. Very well said, Patrick. Patrick says you. your choice is not wrong, but your approach to that choice that you have made. And that is one mm -hmm. thing that I always discuss with Marie, my wife over here, as to how yeah. we are bringing up our children. Yesterday, for instance, we we're talking about the fact that we've actually trained our children up to be creative mm -hmm. in every way they can. You know? The middle one, for instance, decided, okay, I'm going to put art on the side for a bit and pursue psychology. Okay. But then, during this lockdown, she has been painting uh, you know, <laughs> most of the time. Exactly. When, you give them, when you give them that tool, when you give them that um, ability to create, that creative mindset, so, they'll never depart mm -hmm. from it. But you can't, That's as it. a parent, force them into a direction mm -hmm. that you want them to be. So, very well said. And I think your, pair, your your kids, your two kids, will be very proud of you when they get yeah. to read this comment or when actually they, they become aware that you said such a thing about them. Exactly. Great. You know, um, let's, Eric, let's funny enough, enough, you can um, check this in out on my um, Instagram, Patrick William Dodu, and you realize yeah. that each and every time, whenever I'm um, priming my, my canvases, it's my son, Davin, okay. and that of um, um, Kayla, they right. are the ones who prime my wigs. Are you serious? All the time. <laughs> they feel no, this, it's is called, this is called the baptism of art, isn't it? You actually have <laughs> them again. They, they are your apprentice, your young apprentice. That's it. <laughs> That's really That's it, good. Brother. That is really sure. good. Right, mm -hmm. let's let's have a look at some of your work and I'll show them on screen and let's talk about what you do, how you get there, your painting process. And if you want right. us to you know be around do it let's let if you want to show us around you can do that as well so i'm All just right, going to sure. show you okay bits of the work that you do and i'll let you talk about it now the first okay. being the card that you, you you posted right there beautiful card right. what sure. made you actually paint this card? so i have an exhibition coming up i actually thought of having three exhibition on a row um in december and then um unfortunately with this COVID 19 i will need to actually push it to next year but there's a, a theme called um vintage cars the the act of the vintage cars so just bringing them back to life so i picked some few um paintings i mean images from the net and then also when i did the first two paintings of the cars some other few people in UK actually sent me good images, strong good images of vintage cars of um, 1980s, 70s, 60s. And well, I'm actually still working on them. I stopped posting a bit of the most of the cars. Um, this was okay. a photo shoot, but then that was to the benefit of also um, because I just want to finish up my entire collections. I've done 60 paintings of the cars at the moment. I'm actually wow. dreaming to do a hundred piece. That's how my series are. I do a hundred roll of okay. vintage car, calabashes, another few. So the ones behind me that I'll talk about um, is is just a few upshot thing, um, colorful yeah. stuff for on, on calabash show. So guys, when I say this guy's consistent, this is exactly what he's saying, that he does a series of a hundred. I mean, who does mm -hmm. that? He's got the passion to push. There's a question here that I'd like to ask you. <laughs> All the and time. So at the moment, I've done 60. So I'm um, left out with 40 to go. Wow, that is dedication. <laughs> that is work. So there's a question here, and it's talking about parents. Right. Marie says that, what would you both say to parents who can't accept that their children are creatives rather than academics so they can wow. support the kids to express themselves and not restrict them? I'll let you go first, and I'll add my piece to it. All right. Um, okay, so I, I feel that, you know, um, parents have, a strong means as what I made mention of um, I okay am I online yes you are we can hear you oh thank you all right sure thank you all right so so what would you both say to parents who will accept their kids I understand everything that has been said over here but then at the moment you see no matter how it is in our academics or our education system that one of the things that actually propels quite a number of the infants to grab the sense of reading and other things is just by pictorial images in our storybooks. Yes. That's right. By the art. Yeah. Um, secondly, the times of our riddles and other things, songs, lullabies and other things, music is still art. 
these yeah. things are to something as what we say everyday life but it's something we can never ever run away from even to the point yeah. of death you still experience death i mean you experience art to that that extent the the i mean the That's new right. creation of you your spirit whatever i am not dead yet well i've i've been also experienced that but i knew for a fact that there is a sudden point of life after that and so there is yeah. another means of art that is going to but then you see that art continues from there but then what about the business course you did you're not because you'll not be going around with all your um castles whatever that you are still a, a priest in the ghost land but then at no. least you know how to go around and everyone can never run away from but then this is my best of advice to each and every uh parents out there it is something we can't run away from it's the best you would ever i mean encourage your son to do apparently education yes right. is what will make us be able to embrace um, the sense of communication easy sense of communication but cannot guarantee the sense of beauty definitely. let us get this thing straight. definitely education can only help us or aid us to understand our sense of communication being able to yes. speak english as an african and then being able to speak english as maybe um, a foreign uh, european american whatsoever that is it we That's being right. able to calculate things together but then the yes. sense of art is something mm -hmm. you cannot battle with because it holds the sense of beauty that's the only point of attraction very well said so, very well said exactly now to most of the parents out there who fail to actually support their children through art in fact it is a lose lose game that you are doing because mm. each and every time even to the i mean the um, the villager the one we are calling the villager yes i mean guess what most of the artists are even other few maybe uh, masailis or something we call we call it yeah. right most of the yes so all these things are there why are we doing that it's only because they have the sense of beauty their cloth mm -hmm. everything they wear everything about their life people are painting people are trying to just be there tourism is high i mean to its highest peak to all these things i just want to let every single parent out there understand the first mm -hmm. thing ever even remember if you are parents out there now i i believe this Eric, please help me do this if you are parents mm -hmm. out there just understand the street yes. now the first point of the things you started buying for your kids was not encyclopedia it wasn't no it was toys it That's was right. a color pencil it was it was it was a book for them to scribble in it would always be something things. something creative something colorful exactly. something that actually on earth the creativity would exactly. be exactly right exactly so there are things that they will grow with it would be better yeah. for you as you've already laid the foundation to help them build it because yeah. you can build you can build a building but what must be inside it is up to you so yeah. help them build or finish that foundation as art to no matter the level of wherever they will get to if it is a mansion and they are putting in firewood that is up to them that's up if to it's them. a mansion and they are putting in furniture good or modern um, setups that is up to them these are the Great. things i want parents to understand the best life the best of education you would ever love and you would ever let me say um, um inherit back is art mm. definitely that's the I mean, best thing you you, you couldn't your have son goes out there, that's it carry on that's yes. it if, if anyone goes out there, there and a person goes i mean that's it if the person goes out there and the person is not dressed well you will talk about it you forgotten right. that is the sense of art in there yeah. you the expect what we call combination the fashion side of it everyone wants to look good but you hate to actually be the one to also um, to support the people to to produce more you see okay. so these are some of the things well i believe that even the rich people out there would really get to understand their their likes and dislike about how they put maybe infrastructures or right, in, in as much as they have the money Mm. they might equally also have a demand why are they having yeah. the demand they have the yeah. demand because they have the sense of aesthetics beauty mm -hmm. yeah and that sense of aesthetics is only built when you have a sense of art in you that's right so if you're a parent out there and you want the best of your child to dress well 
best of discipline and any other thing will only come out of art. Mm. And you know, Eric, mm. one quote, mm. one of my quotes, you know, I write, yeah. I'm writing books. So one of my quotes is well done. That's the, great. Root, the root of every development, mm. the root of every development is art. That's it. Every country wants now, ultra modern this things. Is, this is what I call a tweetable quote. Yeah. The root <laughs> of every development <laughs> is art. Is art. That's right. That's it, because art art is the root of every development. Every infrastructure from maybe overhead paths, um, bridges, this, that, it's not just about bridge, but how the form will be like. Look That's at right. London Bridge. Yeah. You know, look at other it's not if it was just about bridges, there are bridges in New York too. That's right. But why is London Bridge very, so very different? So yeah. unique. Yeah. You see, the aesthetics, the history behind it is what makes it unique. It what makes it stand out. There are a lot of maybe, um, um, let me say, castles around and everything. But then the one that the queen stays in is so unique, all right? Okay. Only because of not she being in there but it's only because of the aesthetics of it. That's why people will stand by it and, it and, and take pictures. And that is why people will travel from, let's say, China all the way to the UK to come and have a look at Buckingham Palace because, exactly. of, the aesthetic, because of its beauty. Not because they want to exactly. see the queen. Because sure. when you come, you're not even going to see the queen. But you will make no. your way, pay money, and come and stand there and take a selfie. And take a picture. Of the of it. That's right. Sure. So, so these I, are the I, things I, that I, I, I really endorse what you're saying in the sense that as parents, we should let the imagination of our kids flow. We should because art is embedded in them from the spirit world sure. into when they were born. So we should sure. not actually oppose that aspect of the spirit being, Never. which is the creative being within us. Many a times I Never. say that as we grow, we lose the sense mm -hmm. of creativity within us. And a lot mm -hmm. of parents are stressed up. Uh, they are mm -hmm. getting sick as a result of them not embracing creativity. Because yeah. everyone that's a creative person tends to smile a lot. Everybody that's, that's a creative person. And, and that really keeps you going. You grow younger. Mm -hmm. I mean, if I tell you my age, you'll be amazed. I smile a lot sure. because at all times, when I see nature, I connect with it be from a creative point of view. When I see everyday things, like let's say a woman selling mango, I connect with it. So I'm always in a very happy mood. Mm. This is the child in me that comes out. And my advice to parents mm -hmm. to add to everything that you've said, which is so powerful, is that parents should allow their kids to be kids. Even as they grow, their creativity in them should still be there, be encouraged, rather than sure. being pushed aside. Sure, 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 brother. That, that is exactly what you said. You know what? Um, there was this argument. Well, I moved to a lot of um, TV stations and then uh -huh. I had these philosophers, uh, lawyers also came in. They spoke a lot. Then after I asked one question mm -hmm. that each of them should give me one country that says that we have stored something you can see. Yeah. Apparently, even if it's a law book, Okay. And we are saying that it is for history. Mm -hmm. How was it presented? Was it yeah. just freedom and justice as law book and that was it? Or the book itself that has been artistically designed, designed and, and ever, yes. you know, and presented that is there that can be kept? You see, you see, right. visual arts is a sense of being able to form touch, yeah. feel, get yeah. to have an extreme point of it to express your beauty, your sense of beauty to it. Definitely. Now, to quite a normal people and even development, and I'm saying that I'm putting this across to the nations, that just as we said, that um, art is the root of every development. Mm -hmm. Dubai, for instance, please let me do yeah. this. Dubai, for <laughs> instance, was filled with sand. Okay. Was filled with sand. Now, Dubai has actually run a continuous record for eight good years consistently, the whole wide yeah. world, being the top um, um, tourism site in the world. Right. Eight years continuous. This year would have been a blown because they wanted to do the world trade, um, I think some kind trade, of... Trade fair. Yeah, there was a trade exactly. fair. Exactly. And so imagine how it would have been for them. It, it would be that, that like, it would have been, would have been a win-win. But this is what the prince yeah. said. He said that 
I though I knew the vision, I brought in artists first. Definitely. So when you look at the roots of all these things they have in Dubai, from the um, Palm Cities to each and every tower and everything, they brought in artists to just view how it will be. That's right. And these are some so of the things. So you're, you're very right because when you take Egypt, for instance, mm. let's go all the way mm -hmm. back to the Egyptian days. How mm. the pyramids were constructed is so totally an African land, actually. An African on land. African land. Egypt. On African exactly. land. <laughs> it's on an African land. Now, it's exactly. the minds of math mathematicians and scientists mm. and all these mm. archaeologists and the architects of today. How yes. back in, let's say, whatever BC, pyramids were constructed now you can only imagine to be able to construct something without computers to that extent sure. so your imaginative faculty must be so high and your spirit being must also be high because we shouldn't forget that art is spirit as well mm. that is why mm. africans and i always say that our work is more spiritual than just um, an item that you're going to sell we put our spirit and our story in our pieces. Yeah. So I can look behind you, for instance, and let you talk about what you've got behind you. I'm going to put mm -hmm. a similar one on the screen as well. Let's say this sure. abstract right. that you've done, what inspired you to do it? Okay, so um, the, all these ones came under a team called Diversity. So I wanted okay. to express more about, or, I mean, the thing about um, calabashes. Calabashes is, uh, a calabash is some kind of a fruit actually not something that you can eat though but then it's a shell that at the end of when it dries it's it forms um brown in its in any its state but then you see one unique thing about calabash is that calabash is something we store water in it in the local lands it's something that even when it breaks mm. it should it's used in the northern side of the of, of, our, of our lands to whisk up grains Okay. Now, even when it breaks to the minute size sizes of it, it is also used as pendants mm -hmm. in design. Yeah. So, meaning that it's something that can be used from the scratch of um, its existence to even the latter part of it, it is still useful. Now, the diversity coming in is that now each and every color you see over there is just like the colors that we, I mean, um, the human nature. It can be white, right. I can be black, red haired, white haired, black hair, red eyes, yes. blue eyes, no blue, matter blue, how it is. Yes. Exactly. No matter the kind of color we hold, it's how we mend together to make it appealing to the eyes mm. of mm. nature. Now, Mother Nature, at the end of everything, needs us all back together. That's right. And so all these works that I just worked on about diversity is that you can have diverse cultures. You can okay. have diverse means of maybe mentality and everything. But at yeah. the end of it all, the main thing we are all looking at is that we are all on one canvas. All right. That is, is one end? world. Yes. Now, and this, then, is, this is so um, powerful. I'll let you pause right there for me <laughs> to elaborate. The thing I do is that because I'm a motivational mm -hmm. speaker, I'm, I'm a personal development coach. When something mm, is so sure. profound, I like us to just break it down a little bit. What you just said exactly. is so profound that we are mm -hmm. all on one canvas. Now, black, white, sure. yellow, green, whatever mm -hmm. race you are, we are all mm. on one canvas. It is only in our coming together to work as one that a beautiful art piece can be produced. That is so profound. Sure. So you will realize that in the paintings that I have for my color bushes are very, very scattered um colors i will yes. show this actually okay so guys so, live from uh, patrick studio we're going to see how he actually works we're going to see a live painting right behind him sure so over here we have um eight uh, calabashes joined together okay. but very abstract yes it's eight of them um it's in a very strong abstract with bold colors actually expressed over here. Now, the main reason why I use strong colors is only because that, you see, after everything, I still relate it back to human uh, lives. No matter yeah. the diversity of cultures we have, each and everyone wants to be pronounced. Mm -hmm. Each and everyone wants to come out. 
be bold. Yeah. Say, oh, it's my culture that makes this. It's my culture that makes that. At the end of the day, we still want unity. So True. it being unified over here and being colorful and still joined together and it's still appealing to the eyes. Yes. Makes us understand that no matter how it is difficult or what so, no matter how no matter how difficult it is whatsoever, we have just one canvas to all us. I mean, for all of us to express our um, aesthetics values to um, mm. our achievements whatsoever. You can yes. be yellow, you can be red, you can be yes. this, you can be that. But remember, if there is no darkness, there mm. can be light. And if there is light, definitely there is no darkness. But then remember, the reason for the light being there is the only is only because that there was darkness. And so sometimes right. I do say that the need that I mean sometimes in our life as artists, we need that side of darkness, like the challenges we we're, were talking about. I actually needed to go through the challenges that I need to go through so that it will give me a reason to give people, um, I mean, to tell people that, well, I can do this. Yeah. I will need to do that. Like um, work out a number of things that I, I actually, I, I am doing right now. Mm -hmm. If yeah. I didn't get those challenges, it wouldn't have propelled me to the state that I'm in right now. I'm a Very proud well, father, sir. as I mentioned. But then I know that the only thing that can make me take good care of my kids is true art. So I'll do it and do it well. And do it well. And do it well. Very well said, Patrick. I remember during the lockdown, for instance, from my mm. point of view, and you made you threw a challenge for me to make a video talking about yeah. how I cope with it, for instance. To support mm. what you just said right now, it is through the challenges. I remember when we had our lockdown, I didn't know what to do. I thought, you know, it's going to be so boring. We're just going to stay at home doing nothing. Then I remembered, hey, mm -hmm. I'm an artist. Why not uh -huh. spend every single day to, first mm. of all, home in on my craft and also share how I'm coping with the world and tell wow. my African story through every single sketch that I did. So what I did was started painting, uh, let's say, aspects of African children, our uh, drumming, our yeah. uh, dancing, our uh, music. Yeah. And every single day I told a story with that. And wow. people were really enjoying it on a daily basis. So mm. through persecution, through confusion, through darkness, mm -hmm. uh, it's up to the artist to see the light at the end of that tunnel and rise above it. You see, Eric, um, I would say this was my contribution to the COVID-19 experience or what I call the artist diary. Right. Um, yeah, let me have a seat. All okay. what happened on my side is that I think this is the time for quite a number of people to realize the state of art. Yes. Um, one, when the COVID-19 came, it's actually, I mean, it, it's still in existence, but then, oh, yes. you see, when it came, when it came, it actually striked a number of um, countries. Yes. The only piece to educate people was true animation, art. True, true. It was art. Yes. The, the communication, because how to deal with it, was done through art, wasn't it? Everything. Yes. It's something you can expel. It's something that you, you, you would think of, I mean, letting go of. Even the communications, the point of even just showing um, billboards, other things. Wash your hands. That, that was only two. Yeah. Wash your hands, use sanitizer, do this. Right. And lots of animation came through. Now, that's yeah. what I came to do. So, well, to some few things that I've been doing here in Ghana, I was fortunate to be called in as a consultant to um, NYA, that is National Youth Authority, and it actually also helped that just doing some few illustrations towards that time too. Um, okay. Also, with um, great respect to my madam and honorable um, Senator Rollins, who also gave me the opportunity to sketch out um, various means of, our dispensers being used where we cannot, we will not actually use our hands for. So Not there yet, were yeah. a lot of joints, exactly. Though we we're all in the house on the lockdown, but some of us were a bit um, as probably, I mean, efficient to do most of the work the government really needed. And needed so to, yeah. it actually also spelled out something that um, ex-president Jerry John Rowling saw me and then said that, um, you know, what? at a point in life, we really wish to have an artist as a president. Then we will see how oh, yeah. beautiful the country will look like. I, I know I know so, he's an artist himself, isn't he? <laughs> exactly, yes. Yeah, yeah. Because 
when I, I mean, kept working on the work, sometimes he would just share his view and everything. All these okay. people have actually come together. But then you see, one, within that time, I became a consultant. Yes. The times that I was in the house, each and every time I was behind my ma machine trying to do animations to just educate other people. Now, yeah. being um, the art ambassador to SDGs here in Ghana and that of West Africa too, so I needed to do some other few ones that I would be able to present to my boss. Um, I mean, His Excellency Obasanjo um, yeah. in Nigeria, because these yeah. are the same things we send out there to um, African Union for them to lay approvals on and other few things. So yeah, I'm was just going to show a picture out, out there on screen. Um, mm -hmm. I was going to ask you a question about it, but I think you've delved into that area. Now, Patrick uses art to solve socioeconomic issues. And as artists, this is one of the things that we all do, whereby we address issues in our system. And Patrick does it so brilliantly. As you can see on screen, he's got the sustainable development goals <laughs> on there. The best education through art is on the left-hand side. And on the right-hand side, I think you were speaking to the Accra Metropolitan Assembly, weren't you? Exactly. Exactly. Right. So exactly. carry on with the story and then also talk about sure. the two pictures that you can see on screen there. Exactly. So the main thing about all these things is that at the end of the day, art was seen as a top niche thing, even before um, other education systems recognized that, okay, we could use um, this app for this education, we could use this for that. Other parents were only encouraged. In Ghana, it was broadcast. Parents should be encouraged to enable maybe um, crafty items for the kids yeah. to aid them in good now crafty items is no use for math it's no use for no. science no. it's it's no use for social studies it's used mm -hmm. for arts so if you are getting them painting brushes you are getting them this or that yes it can be used for all these things based on maybe what they will draw they might probably yeah. draw land they, uh, that um, would actually also work along with maybe social studies there something about science they can draw beakers something about maybe um I mean, a lot of things could be done. But then you see, these are the whole things. I've educated quite a number of people through this, through art in various countries, um, yeah. Liberia, Sierra Leone, Nigeria, Zambia, Zimbabwe, South Africa, and then still yeah. ongoing, but then still under the tuition and also the, um, the, um, the help from AYGC, African Youth um, Government. Um, which has also been very helpful. But then you mm -hmm. see, being an artist is not just, I mean, being an artist is a huge mandate. Yes. It's, it's, it's you, I mean, it's something to be said that um, I, I'm a pastor. I was called by God. Yeah. In fact, the first people ever called, it, I mean, are artists. Definitely. Because they are the ones that have actually brought in, in recognition and discovery of the entire world. Mm. Now, let me tell you something yeah. about what you yeah. just said, for instance, mm. Mm. whereby, you know, I'm a Christian, you're a Christian, our reference point mm -hmm. is the Bible, for instance. Exactly. And the first few words that God said was that, let us create. Now, from Genesis, it is creation, mm. the mm. act of creation that God mm. actually spoke and it came into being. Yeah. And then mm -hmm. when Adam and Eve were created as well, his commandment was that what? Take dominion, increase, multiply. It's like turn this earth into your being. Name the, the, the animal. Be creative with what I've given you. Mm. So our first charges as men when we were put on earth was to enter into that realm of creativity and take charge of our surroundings. Take exactly. charge of the birds of the air, the fishes of no. the sea, and every living creature and turn it into how we want it to be. Wow. So when the earth was without uh, form, well, we had to shape it. When you come to London, for instance, you've got River Thames, which mm -hmm. runs through the whole of the city. It's been wow. shaped in how wow. human beings want it. In sure. like manner, in Africa, you mm -hmm. have shapes of things of mm -hmm. nature. We, mm -hmm. as human beings, have actually turned it around to how we want it to suit us and serve sure. us. So we cannot just sit dormant and say that art does not play a role in society. It plays no. a huge role. A huge role. That I'm brings me to the I'm point of my mayor in Accra. You see, the mayor of Accra, um, Honorable Ajay Soa, my highest right. respect to this wonderful man who recognized 
um, the points and it also gave me this um, pulpit for me to be behind that is the Accra Metropolitan Assembly and that was on the Arts Day. Now he won also, he actually created a point of the Arts Day for quite a number of um, people to recognize and also share as like a, something that could be held like a holiday. Now okay. also he brought in existence what we call Accra for Arts. Mm -hmm. Now with this project, is one of the greater things I would say personally he has ever wow. done. And okay. it's something that a lot of people are testifying to. Take a yeah. look at our interchange. That it That's came right. to a point, we, I mean, he gave the full mandate and support. And then every letter, any other thing to just cover people's protection, I mean, artist protection, just to be there, full support, police, um, escorts, um, good feeding systems, a whole lot of things. And then, yeah. listen, this gentleman, sorry, my honorable, honorable Ajisoa. <laughs> he's a gentleman, that, anyway. know, He's a gentleman. Uh, exactly. He's a true gentleman. <laughs> yeah. So, edit out with all these things, and then guess what, how Accra is looking now. You get I'm to you. the headquarters of Standard Chartered Bank, um, yeah. Aqua J Interchange, and it's so spectacular. People driving will even just slow down to just That's enjoy the artworks Exactly. And then still doing a number of things and even bringing art groups together. Chaluote, Ghana Graffiti, Pito, Painting in the Open, um, Gava, Ghana Visual Artists Association, bringing every artist around together. Even the people that are around, I mean, just the Kaya Yos, the, um, the market women, are even giving yep. the opportunity for them to even share their brains or even hold the brush and then express themselves on the walls. Express themselves. These are the express things happening even here in Ghana. And it's working. So, this, this, so, is, this is the exact role that we as artists play in society whereby exactly. we let the art that we do actually serve us. You know, there's no point in producing art that's not serving your own self. And it exactly. starts from serving you, serving your home, and then mm -hmm. moving into your community for art to serve mm -hmm. the community. And as you mm -hmm. just described, these interchanges, or when, when President Kufuado came on and said, I'd like Accra to be the cleanest city in Africa, one exactly. of the actual tangible steps that we all witnessed just around March or just before there was lockdown in Accra mm -hmm. was that the interchanges or the artworks that were at the Aqua, Aqua J Interchange Aqua J, yes. had beautified the whole of Accra. And, and my what? good old friend, um, what's his name, the, the photographer? Um, Yao Opari. Yao Opari. Yao Opari. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, his pictures were so brilliant. I haven't <laughs> seen Accra in such a state. Well, that's spot on. But, yes. But it points mm -hmm. to the fact that it took artists to get into motion, to make this vision of the president happen. So exactly. the lives of uh, Zanato Rollins and mm. President Kufuado and all those mm. who are behind artists and, and the Accra mayor, behind yes. artists making Accra and Ghana and Africa as a whole a beautiful place to live in, cannot be mm. overemphasized. And I'll encourage all our leaders to appreciate the work that we do as artists and embrace what we bring to the table. Because at the exactly. end of the day, we stand for cleanliness. We stand mm -hmm. for beauty. We stand for aesthetics. Mm -hmm. We stand for form. Mm -hmm. Anything that is mm -hmm. pleasing to the eye, that is what we bring to the table. Mm -hmm. I'm going to show a picture of you with uh, our, our, our past president of Asanjo. And uh, there you go. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That is, that is our good old Patrick with uh, exactly with sure. on there. So just for you to put into perspective what he was talking about. Okay, so Baba, I have a video of that time too and a short recording which I will send to you. And then he was saying Definitely. something, he said something small just around that time that picture was taken. He said that in his time, he was a farmer before he became a soldier. And he wouldn't okay. know after being a soldier, arrested, came out, um, yep. election, and then he became the president. Mm -hmm. And then at the moment, if you are talking of the one of the most um, biggest um, farms we have in 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 africa, in africa. he happens yes. to have one look at, at Abitika, exactly i was fortunate to be at this place and stayed with him for two weeks learned mm. a lot of things from him um apparently on my quest as an artist also ex, um, ex, i mean um just doing all this and you also the question interchange it's amazing thank you mary right. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yes, I was just reading things of Mar for Marie. So, uh, well, I had the opportunity to be with um, ex-president 
um, uh, um, Obasanjo, and then I must say that it was a spot on life achievement to me so much. He gave me the attention. He just around that time, all what he said is that in those days, when you go saying, your, your parents will say, uh, be a doctor. Aha. I'm just repeating how he will go about it. Be a doctor. Aha. Be a lawyer. Aha. Be, right. uh, be exactly industrial something. Aha. Be an artist. No, 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 no. But the <laughs> time you they will end up saying, no, you've taken a slap. <laughs> oh, dear, oh, dear. Oh, dear, oh, dear. But it's not to do with changing, changing the narrative, isn't it? Changing the perception. Um, if we are mm -hmm. able as artists to educate the society, and as you that said from the amazing. very onset of this interview, us actually showing you know, the justification of what we bring to the yeah. table, then we believe that sure. parents will be enlightened the more. They'll be able to sure. learn and know that, okay, an mm -hmm. artist is not just somebody who draws, and, and that's no. the end of the story, but we are able to use our art to change society. I mean, when we Hello. talked about the cleanliness, it was through yeah. art. Apart from cleaning the gutters and all that, when you finish cleaning all the gutters, your surroundings need to look presentable. It was through sure. art that this came to be in. Now, exactly. during this quarantine, it was through art that the signage of communication was mm -hmm. actually through animation and drawings and art. This is how the world communicated to the whole world. It wasn't just in Ghana. That's it. All the signage around the world for people to observe social sure. distancing was sure. even through art. So mm -hmm. art plays a major role in our society. Mm -hmm. We cannot underemphasize that. Exactly. So personally, I just need to take that bold step of moving from one country to the other. Um, getting right. to be in Zambia, um, President Karunda having to meet him, he was surprised. You are an artist and you are doing this. Are you actually a politician? Well, I told him, <laughs> no, I'm not a politician. He equally made that same statement as mm. pres ex-president Jerry John Rawlings also stated that yeah. how I wish one day an artist would be a president. We'll and it's see so possible. Around. Patrick, it's so that possible. It. I, don't, I don't want us to take yeah. it from our mindset at all. Because we sure. as artists find creative and imaginative ways mm -hmm. of solving problems. And that is Lots. what you need in society. When you take engineers, for instance, and I'm a mechanical mm -hmm. engineer as well, mm -hmm. we go into that creative mindset and bring solutions mm -hmm. the same way an artist would do, where they get on their canvas and it's a blank canvas, there's nothing on there. By the That's time it. they are done with you, you will mm -hmm. see the beauty in life. This is sure. a very complex way of working, where the brain actually enters into a space and presents something that is emotionally appealing exactly. as well as exactly. aesthetically appealing exactly. to the viewer. So sure. we, we hold a very strong uh, place in society. Exactly. And then, you know, how to win their hearts always has been the life painting. Mm. Kenneth Kawunda, um, President Lungu from Zambia. Um, yes. The same thing with some other few art heads in South Africa too. Um, me with Econet, um, Shriver mm -hmm. Masayawe in Zimbabwe. It's yes. all through the same art. And these were the same people who supported a number of murals I did in Sierra Leone, Liberia, and some other few places. That's right. Well... <laughs> yeah, uh, Marie, Marie uh, says Africa has an ex-footballer. Exactly. We can have an artist. <laughs> no, exactly like Bia, Bia. Now, the footballer had to actually be tactical in his prime days in being able mm -hmm. to dribble people and have a technical mindset to score. In like manner, sure. artists <laughs> also use their creative ways to deliver mm -hmm. that which is good. Mm -hmm. And and mm -hmm. we are doing really well. So yes, Very we well. should embrace. It shouldn't just be only lawyers that go into presidency no, or politics and all that. No, we should welcome no. engineers, we should welcome artists, we should welcome footballers. We should, anybody that can bring a solution to the table is what but we you welcome. See, brother, that's the same thing that comes on the ballpoint that I think that we, the artists, have a lot of things to do. We have mm. a lot of assignments to actually accomplish. We need to That's give right. people the reason to understand that our cause is not an easy cause. It's it is not. not a cause to be less regarded in schools where they tell you, oh, okay, if you get a big mark, then go and do science. If oh, you get yes. a low mark, or even if you don't qualify, that, that low mark even doesn't qualify to be in the low marks, just um, send him That's to an art school. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, at the point, I felt it was so insulting. But then is at it? the point, I felt, well, Sure, it is very insulting, no matter how it is. Um, the main thing, too, is that it's only because I personally blame 
our artist leaders mm. who uh, I mean who got to that point in yes. in life of maybe achievement some people have really made it but then no support to the lesson one to also mm-hmm. hold on to them yes. yes I'm here each and every time I'm doing almost kind of doing um, workshops for quite a number of young artists pain visits this person maybe parents coming to drop their kids off at my end maybe right. I might be painting and my call ahead and I'll do this these are the states of the encouragement that they are building up I have a lawyer from US yeah. and she's here actually in Ghana right now she's not practicing the law she is painting yeah. and her two daughters each and every time two days of each and every week are always with me mm. to come stay mm. and they go two days after each and every time so between and, 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 and who, knows, here. who knows what they'll become as a result of the input that's that you're it. giving them now? That's it. Apparently, they are not even in school doing art. One is doing mm-hmm. psychology like my kid sister is doing over, you know. <laughs> one is doing psychology and then one, two is doing some some something, not even nothing related with art in particular. Related to it. But mm. then they spend two days each and every time painting, painting, painting. We have projects. We like to do this. We have projects. We like to do that. Art, as I said, is the root of every development. And the root if of every, every African continent, I mean, every, every African country would be able to embrace this, we would see the meaning and the true sight that our history holds a lot of value. Because that's the only means to preserve it. That's the only means to make beauty part of it and then cover it as a protection or a package for others to also receive. Very well put. I'd like us to look at the world scene. You know, we've been talking about mm. Africa, but let us take Africa to the world. Now, we've got exactly. a lot of artists who have become successful, people like El Anatui, uh, mm. Abladi Glover, yeah. and to name yeah. a lot, you know, you, you have so many of them yeah. who have made sure. it into the international world. Mm. But the challenge is, how do we continue with this story? How do we get a lot more like the Eric's and the Patrick's and uh, mm. the Jonathan's and everyone that's behind us? Isha, exactly. you know, all yeah, those who are up and coming to actually be a part of this journey and to propel this message that we're trying to tell the world in a much bigger way. How should we do that? At a point in my life to solve an issue like this is when I actually came up with a group called Pito Painting in the okay. Open. Yes. Now, painting in the open, a cluster of artists, very vibrant artists, um, great out there, doing extremely well. But I thought that they are so much confined in their in their zone, and so they need to yeah. break out. And so mm-hmm. I thought about this, and I felt like, okay, if that will be the best, then I would say for once that um, bringing all these artists together would have a strong meaning to others to actually learn from when we all go out there. So Pito actually means painting in, in the, the open. open. So I love the that. initials, that actually explains out Pito. And yes. so we actually came up with that. And then the whole thing was just bring artists together, share mm-hmm. ideas together. And then even with the funds we are able to raise from our few paintings that will go out there to paint, we'll be able to help other orphanages and other schools with it. I'm and just going to show, three, as you're talking, um, I have pictures exactly. that are posted on our platform. Sure, okay. sure. Okay. So a number of people are really doing a lot of things, as we can see right now with my brother, um, Alote, in in terms of sculpture. So there's a lot of things that we are doing. But then that was how I thought I could actually, I mean, we could actually save the space of um, arts and the people where they would actually also get to understand that, all right, there is a need for that essence that arts can actually change the world. But uh, it can only happen only Mm. when the artists themselves come together. You made mention of Professor Glover. You made mention yes. of um, um, our most honorable man, Master Anachi. Yeah. There are spiking artists from Ghana here and other few places out there too, like Voka from um, Germany. Oh, Voka yes. is doing extremely well and then each and every time also, I mean, bringing in people. Well, even on the internet, he's very open We speak about all these things so much. I believe for a fact that if we, the artists, are not together, we should just forget about other people looking up to us. Exactly that. 
exactly that. And Patrick, I'll pause you right there and elaborate on what you just said because oh, I said. There's, there's a common cause amongst artists mm -hmm. around the whole world. Mm -hmm. But each one is telling their own story. When you go to the U.S., they tell the history of the U.S. through their art and they preserve yeah. it. When you go mm -hmm. to the Natural History Museum, for instance, the artworks over there are telling, let's say, the British story. Now, as yeah. Africans, if we are to be that powerful force, if we are to preserve that which is our own, if we are to tell mm -hmm. our story in a manner that suits us, because who mm -hmm. else can tell your story than yourself? If we are to sure. do that, the key to success is what? Unity. Unity. Sure. When we have come together for a common cause, I remember when we were painting the Akwaje Interchange, you had a yeah. group of artists coming together. Well, they had an objective to make that mm -hmm. exchange, uh, the interchange, a beautiful interchange. So they were able to accomplish their goal. But if you are very divisive and you're like, oh, my brother is doing this, or my brother has copied me, or we should respect each other. Even in that exactly. sense, you can use someone as an inspiration, but don't, don't copy mm -hmm. them verbatim. Exactly. Let us respect <laughs> each other's work. Let us also sure. encourage each other to come out creatively and, and create together and then mm. form that common front. So I like the fact that you formed uh, Pito, which is painted in the open, yeah. and you are going, I'm a part of it anyway. I've got the T-shirt. Uh, exactly. I'm, <laughs> I'm a part of it. And I, I like the fact that we go out there to showcase our work as one unit. And we need a lot more such groups to come together as one. Because when you have individual groups who are not talking to each other, uh, it mm. creates a lot of problems. And the leaders exactly. do not take us serious. Mm -hmm. So I urge all the art groups in Ghana to come together as one so that we go forward with a common purpose, a common goal, and we'll be given the budget to suit us uh, to be uh, able to do our projects. I mean, that, that's, that's the solution. So that was the first thing. We coming together makes us so solidified to break through because mm. I don't believe that just a stick can break a wall, but if no. it's a whole uh, lump of um, wood, that yeah. actually will be the one to actually break through all those um, mentality of stigmatizations yeah. and all that barriers too. That's right. Then also, I would say that the the next thing is our actions and our um, exhibition to our works out there. Okay. One of the things that I would like most of the artists out there to understand is that the only thing that makes us understand more about other countries is only true art. That's it. Some of us hasn't been to some certain places. And when I speak of the art, I'm not talking about the paintings alone. I'm talking about even no. to the point of our brother, Yao Pari, how he's actually exhibiting so wonderfully images so wonderfully. of Ghana. Oh, wow. yes. Oh, yes. I had friends of mine in um, from um, Germany asking me, Patrick, is it really true that you're staying on the trees? I <laughs> know. <laughs> in, in it's not true. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> so, you know, it, it's, um, but then it's true and it's out there. And so I believe for a fact that the images we put out there also count. So we, the artists, have a lot of things to do, even as, as um, um, to the speak where we are talking about unity. Yes, right. unity for once. But then our works out there must be something that speaks extreme volume, not any selfish gain, but something related to all. Um, in, in something relation to the new thing, a new trend of art that is a contemporary art installation that we can't run away from, just yeah. defining more about space and time. Okay. Um, our brother, Ibrahim Mahama, would actually use jute. Yes, um, really good. Exactly. Really and then my brother, <laughs> my brother um, Serge Clote, would also use um, gallons, afro gallons in effect, yes. Exactly. Yeah. And then quite a number of people, my brother Ishak, my brother yeah. Ahmed, all these people are out there and they are doing extremely so well. I all what I would Boche, like to um, I think Chris Boche held um, exactly. I think still still it. Exactly, Chris Boche is over there. He, right. Yes, he's still having it. Um, uh, what? Dark Purple is Dark is Purple black. exhibition in uh, 19 Gallery 57 or something. Exactly, 1957 at um, Kempiski yeah. Hotel. And yeah. then I would like to also use this to also mention out my brother over here, um, um, Boafo. Okay. 
Wafo. He, I mean, this wonderful guy who is also now doing so much wonderful things at Art Basel and other few exhibitions. That's right. I, I know. know Wafo. Yes. Exactly. So, yeah, I'm Wafo. I'm Wafo. I'm Wafo. Um, yes, artists, artists out there. Quite a number of people are and actually then, and then doing even it. What are, you going to, what are you going to graffiti? You've got Mo. Mo is doing brilliantly well exporting the, the culture exactly. into let's say, places like Brazil, exactly. for instance. That's so that's it. it. So there's, no you, there's no boundary. That's no That's the main thing. Uh, not to call you also forget about his own paddy paddy uh Titibotan Kali. Kali you know? is also moving for <laughs> what <laughs> yeah, Kali is also doing well. Kali is but, moving yeah. from one, you know, Sao Tome to Sierra right. Leone, like and then, Libra, and then you've got Jonathan Denmark. Jonathan Quedry. Jonathan is also exactly his, his also spread that China. some years ago. Exactly, and then to other few places in Thailand too. That's right. So this thing, you should just understand that it's not just about the personality, it's about the works. Yeah. It's the works that is propelling them it to the places speak. they are getting to. Sure. Yeah. So the work is going to speak for you. So if we want the heads of the states to understand us, what are we presenting for them to understand us with? That's it. It's the work. If you is want our parents to encourage the kids to actually come through, it is still, as what I said, give them a reason. And that reason is the work that you're producing. Work. You're and so let, these, let them spike out the well, neatly presented, good exhibitions, and then good educational system as what your work explains out to be. Because they want right. to see the concept behind it. What is it that actually makes a very good and straight difference to all these things that we are seeing in other few countries too. So not right. as to bridge it so much into Ghana or Africa, even in Nigeria, Sunday Chuku is there, even for, I mean, sculpture side, Sunday Chuku, um, yeah. we have Tonya from Nigeria. Um, mm -hmm. She's also doing extremely well. Quite a number of people are really, 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 really doing it good. But then all I would say for now with all these things about um, people getting to be encouraged about art and also supporting their kids through is that we, the artists, that's a first call. That's a first oh, call. Yes. We, the artists, let's give them all a reason to just hold on to that. All right, Definitely. Everybody. And on that so, note, um, I'll be rounding up on this interview, but you've given us so many yeah. nuggets to encourage sure. up and coming artists as well as mm -hmm. the body of art, you know, institutions mm -hmm. in Ghana to come together. And I really thank you for your time that you've spent with us this day. I don't think this will be the end of our interviews. It'll be just the first off. And I'll arrange okay. for another series where we'll talk specifically about your work and also talk mm -hmm. about how we can actually get the international market to re recognize African artists and give us yeah. the the actual worth of what the work is due. You know, mm. people sell work for millions of pounds or dollars around mm. the world, and Africans also deserve that. Now, apart from the money as a value, we also deserve that recognition that comes yeah. with it. So I will sure. definitely make sure that we carry on with this interview and um, Thank you. Thank also you. invite most of the friends within Pito to join us as well. Wow. So thank you so much, Patrick. Any last words sure, for your bro. viewers? Well, all I will say at the moment is that there is no room for improvement if you neglect art. That's all I would Simply say. Good. Simply good. Simply <laughs> good. Thank you so much, and God bless you. Right. We'll catch up after the show. God bless you. Great. So Patrick says that there is no room of improvement um, if you neglect art. So you should be able to improve whatever you do as an artist. You should commit to it now. Commitment comes with practice. One thing that I find um, very shabby about the work that some African artists do is that they don't put in that finishing touch, that aesthetic, that packaging, something that would let it stand above the rest. Because every almost everybody can paint. But what sets you apart is what makes the difference. So we thank Patrick so much for um, joining us on this maiden episode of African Art Talks with Eric. Now, before I sign off, I have got a surprise for some of you and I'm doing a brilliant offer for all those who are willing to invest a bit into my art. I've got these three pieces going on there and I'm offering to do canvas prints. These are very good, high quality canvas prints of these three pieces. So if you inbox me, we can actually come to a very good deal and you can own a piece of my work. The first one is called the Akan Trumpet Players. The middle one, as you well know, um, has been going on on social media 
and it's gone a bit viral to some extent the actual feedback that i'm having on this middle piece is amazing the original has already been sold and i'm doing canvas prints on that and the last one is to do with COVID 19 and how love conquers fear love conquers all so yes just inbox me and i will know i'll arrange something for you to have in your room as well thank you so much this evening thank you for all those that joined me all the comments i'll try and um, just read a few names of those that joined this evening and see if there are any additional comments to read so thanks a lot marie my own dear wife marie joined me i've got senior Kweku ayakwa deborah who also joined me great supporter of my artwork and pieces of art coming from my home as i told you my daughters do paint a lot thank you senior Kweku ayakwa uh we have ebenezer ampa who also joined and Samuel Obinfosu joined this evening, Daniel Gilbert, and my own cousin, Osei Debra, Titus Abora. Titus, you're on this list. Titus is a brilliant artist, African artist living here. Ernie Atewo also joined. And Daniel Cascado, thank you so much, Daniel, for joining. And Ajay Ajete joined. And we've got Kofi Apia, who also joined. And for everyone else that joined me this evening that I haven't mentioned names of, uh denta also denta i'm watching mba denta thank you for joining and everyone else on other platforms that i couldn't mention god bless you so much and until i come your way next week enjoy your weekend and god